In parts of southern and eastern India, a Devadasi Sanskrit, Devadasi lit. Female servant of Dev the divine or Jogini was a term used for a young woman who dedicated her life to the worship and service of a Hindu deity or a temple. Devadasis could be as young as seven years old when they were initiated into this way of life. The initiation or padikatu ceremony is similar to Hindu marriage in some aspects and the Devadasi was expected to take up the traditional duties performed by a Hindu wife belonging to that time period. In addition to taking care of the temple and performing rituals, these women also learned and practiced classical Indian artistic traditions like Bharatanatya and Odissi dances. They had a high social status as dance and music were an essential part of temple worship. After becoming Devdasis, these young women would spend their time learning religious rites, rituals and dance. They had children from high officials or priests who were also taught their skills of music or dance. Eminent personalities that have hailed from this community are Bharat Ratna M. S. Subalakshmi and Padma Vibhushan Ms. Balasaraswati. During British rule, in the Indian subcontinent, kings who were the patrons of temples and temple arts lost their power. As a result, Devadasi were left without their traditional means of support and patronage. During colonial times, reformists worked towards outlawing the Devadasi tradition. Colonial views on Devadasi are hotly disputed by several groups and organisations in India and by Western academics. The British were unable to distinguish the Devadasi from the girls who danced in the streets for the reasons other than spiritual devotion to the deity. This caused socio-economic deprivation and perusal of folk arts. Recently the Devdasi system has started to disappear, having been outlawed in all of India in 1988. Devdasi are also known by various other local terms, such as Jogini. Furthermore, the Devdasi practice is known as Basivi in Karnataka, Matangi in Maharashtra and Bhavan and Kalavantan in Goa. It is also known as Venkatasani, Nalis, Muralis and Theridian. There were Devadasis from Iyer communities as they performed Bharatanadiyam. Devadasi are sometimes referred to as a caste, however, some question the accuracy of this usage. According to the Devadasi themselves there exists a Devdasi way of life or professional ethic vriti, murai, but not a Devadasi jati sub -caste. Later, the office of Devdasi became hereditary but it did not confer the right to work without adequate qualification." Amrit Srinivasan, 1985. In Europe the term Bayadere from French, Bayadere, ascending to Portuguese, Baladera, literally dancer was occasionally used. History According to rules concerning temple worship agamas, dance and music are necessary ingredients of daily puja of deities in temples. <laughs> Ancient and medieval period The definite origin of Devdasi tradition is unknown to history. There appears no mention of such tradition in the ancient works of Buddhist Jataka, Kaltilya and Vatsyayana. Many scholars have noted that the tradition has no basis in scriptures. Altakar states, "...the custom of association of dancing girls with temples is unknown to Jataka literature. It is not mentioned by Greek writers, and Arthashastra, which describes in detail the life of Ganak, is silent about it." The link of dancing girls with temples is said to be developed during the 3rd century AD. The mention of such dancing girls is found in the Megaduta of Kalidas, a classical poet and Sanskrit writer of the Gupta Empire in ancient India. Other sources include the works of authors such as Xuanzang, a Chinese traveler, and Kalhana, a Kashmiri historian. An inscription dated to the 11th century suggests that there were 400 Devdasi attached to the temple at Tanjore in South India. Similarly, there were 500 Devdasi at Someshwar Shrine of Gujarat. Between the 6th and 13th centuries, Devdasi had a high rank and dignity in society and were exceptionally affluent, who were seen as the protectors of music and dance. During this period, royal patrons provided them with gifts of land, property and jewellery. <laughs> Devdasis in South India and the Chola Empire Devar Adigalar. The Chola Empire encouraged the Devdasi system, in Tamil they are known as Devar Adigalar, Dev, being Sanskrit for divine, and Adigalar, servants, i.e., 
servants of the divine. Both male and female Devdasi were dedicated to the service of a temple and its deity. They developed the system of music and dance employed during temple festivals. Inscriptions reveal that 400 dancers, along with their gurus and orchestras, were maintained by the Brihadisvarar temple, Thanjavur, with munificent grants, including the daily disbursement of oil, turmeric, beetle leaves, and nuts. Natuvanars were the male accompanists of the Devdasi during her performance. They conducted the music orchestra while the Devdasi performed her service. Inscriptions reveal that Natuvanars were used to teach the Chola princess Kundavai a thousand years ago. As the Chola Empire expanded in wealth and size, they built more temples throughout their country. Soon other emperors started imitating the Chola Empire and developed the system. Natavailalu <inaudible> <inaudible> A community of Karnatak living in Andhra Pradesh, the Natavailalu are also known as Natvaru, Banahiga Natavalu, Bogum, Bogum, Bogum Balia, or Kalavantulu. Baliyas at the census, 1901, were Joculas, among whom it was, at Tenali in the Krishna district, formerly customary for each family to give up one girl for Devdasi system. Under the influence of social reform, a written agreement was a few years ago entered into to give up the practice. Adapapa. Female attendants on the ladies of the families of Zamindars, who, as they are not allowed to marry, lead a life of prostitution. Their sons call themselves Baliyas. In some places, e.g., the Krishna and Godavari districts, this class is known as Kasa or Kasavanlu. Sri Raja Venugopala Krishna Yachandralu Guru, unmarried, but had issue, two illegitimate sons by Saraswadhamma, a dasa of the Baliya community. He died on 20 June 1920. Natavailalu, Kalawan, a community of Andhra Pradesh, they are also referred to as Devadasi, Bogamvalu, Ganakulu, and Sani and are distributed throughout the state. Kalavantulu means one who is engaged in art. <laughs> Mahari Devadasi of Odisha Unlike in other parts of India, in the eastern state of Odisha the Devadasis, also known colloquially as Mahari s of the Jagannatha temple complex, were never sexually liberal, and have been expected to remain celibate from the time they became Devadasis. However, they did have relationships and children, so this practice was obviously not strictly adhered to. It is said that the daughters of the Maharis of the Jagannatha temple took to other professions such as nursing in the mid-20th century, because of the stigma attached to their inherent profession, which does suggest prostitution. Devadasi is a name given to a group of women who danced in the temple premises. The word Devadasi or Mahari means, "...those great women who can control natural human impulses, their five senses and can submit themselves completely to God Mahari means may and nari that is, the woman belonging to God. Sri Chaitanyadev had defined Devadasis as Sabayadas who served God through dance and music. Pankaj Sharan Das, the oldest guru of Odissi classical dance, who comes from a Mahari family, explains Mahari as Maha Ripu Ari one who conquers the five main ripas, enemies. The Orissa Gazette of 1956 lists nine Devadasis and eleven temple musicians. By 1980, only four Devadasis were left, Harapriya, Kakilaprabha, Parishmani and Shashimani. By 1998, only Shashimani and Parishmani were alive. The daily ritualistic dance had stopped long ago. This twosome served in a few of the yearly temple rituals like Nabakalabara, Nanda Utsava and Duara Paka during Bauda Jatra, the last of the Devadasis. Shashimani, died on 19 March 2015, at the age of 92. Yelama cult of Karnataka in South India In the state of Karnataka in the region of South India the Devadasi system was followed for over ten centuries. Chief among them was the Yelama cult. There are many stories about the origin of the Yelama cult. The most prevalent one says that Ranuka was the daughter of a Brahmin, married to sage Jamadagni and was the mother of five sons. She used to bring water from the river Malaprabha for the sages' worship and rituals. One day while she was at the river, she saw a group of youths engage themselves in water sports and forgot to return home in time which made Jamadagni to suspect her chastity. He ordered his sons one by one to punish their mother but four of them refused on one pretext or the other. The sage cursed them to become eunuchs and got her beheaded by his fifth son, Parashoram. 
To everybody's astonishment, Renuka's head multiplied by tens and hundreds and moved to different regions. This miracle made her four eunuch sons and others to become her followers, and worship her head. Colonial era Reformists and abolitionists Reformists and abolitionists consider the Devadasi a social evil, being prostitutes. The first anti-Nosh and anti-dedication movement was launched in 1882. The portrayal of the Devadasi system as prostitution sought to advertise the grotesqueness of the subject population for political ends, while the British colonial authorities officially maintained most brothels in India. For those who supported imperialism on the grounds of its civilizing function, programs of reform had ideological rewards. Due to the Devadasi being equated to prostitutes, they also became associated with the spreading of venereal disease syphilis in India. During the British colonial period, many British soldiers were exposed to venereal disease in the various brothels being operated at that time. As such, Devadasis were misunderstood to be responsible for this. In efforts to control the spread of venereal disease, the British government mandated that all prostitutes register themselves, with Devadasis being forced to do this as well, as they were thought to be prostitutes by the British government. In addition to obligatory registration, the British government also established institutions known as lock hospitals, where women were brought in order to be treated for venereal diseases. However, many of the women admitted to these hospitals, including many Devadasi women, were identified through the registry and then brought to the hospitals against their will, with a number of these women never seen again by their families. In 2011, Rationalist Debashis, the General Secretary of Rationalists and Humanists Forum of India, filed complaint and got four people, arrested who were involved in making Devdasi in Yelama Temple. Since then Devdasi system in Yelama temple had stopped, Sitava Jodati of Belagavi district today helps victims find a foothold in society. At seven, she was a Devadasi. Thirty-six years later, she is a Padma Shri awardee. In 1997 she began a non-governmental organization called MASS Mahila Abhavruti Samrakshana Sansthi in Ghataprabha, Belagavi district to help women like her escape the clutches of the Devadasi system and live a life of dignity and she can now proudly look back at the last two decades as her efforts during this time have helped bring over 4,800 Devadasis into mainstream society. Her efforts were recognized and Padmashri Award given to her in 2018. <inaudible> Revivalists Rukmini Devi Arundale, a theosophist and trained in ballet, sought to reappropriate the Devadasi dance traditions and bring them into a context which could be perceived as respectable. She did this by changing the dance repertoire to exclude pieces perceived as erotic in their description of a deity. She also systematized the dance in a way that incorporated the extension and use of space associated with dance traditions such as ballet. The product of this transformation was Bharatnatyam, which she then began to teach professionally at a school she established in Madras called Kalakshetra. Bharatnatyam is commonly propagated as a very ancient dance tradition associated with the Natyasastra. However, in reality, Bharatnatyam as it is performed and known today is a product of Arendale's endeavor to remove the Devadasi dance tradition from the perceived immoral context of the Devadasi community and bring it into the upper caste performance milieu. Legislative initiatives The first legal initiative to outlaw the Devadasi system dates back to the 1934 Bombay Devadasi Protection Act. This act pertained to the Bombay province as it existed in the British Raj. The Bombay Devadasi Protection Act made dedication of women illegal, whether consensual or not. In 1947, the year of independence, the Madras Devadasi Prevention of Dedication Act outlawed dedication in the Southern Madras Presidency. The Devadasi system was outlawed in all of India in 1988, yet some Devadasis still practice illegally. Topic: <laughs> Devadasi practices. 
From the late medieval period until 1910, the Padakatu or Talai tying dedication ceremony, was a widely advertised community event requiring the full cooperation of the local religious authorities. It initiates a young girl into the Devadasi profession and is performed in the temple by the priest. In the Brahmanical tradition marriage is viewed as the only religious initiation diksha permissible to women. Thus the dedication is a symbolic marriage of the pubescent girl to the temple's deity. In the Sadanku or puberty ceremonies, the Devadasi initiate begins her marriage with an emblem of the god borrowed from the temple as a stand-in bridegroom. From then onward, the Devadasi is considered a Nitya Sumangali, a woman eternally free from the adversity of widowhood. She would then perform her ritual and artistic duties in the temple. The puberty ceremonies were an occasion not only for temple honor, but also for community feasting and celebration in which the local elites also participated. Odisha The Orissa Gazette of 1956 mentions some occasions where the Devadasis danced. They had two daily rituals. The Bihara Ganas would dance at the Sakala Dupa. Lord Jagannatha, after breakfast, would give darshana to the bhaktas the devotees. In the main hall, a devadasi accompanied by musicians and the rajaguru, the court guru, would dance, standing near the Garuda Stamba, pillar. This dance could be watched by the audience. They would perform only pure dance here. The Batara Ganas would sing at the Badashinghara, the main ceremony for ornamenting and dressing the god. Lord Jagannatha, at bedtime, would be first served by male sabayatas they would fan him and decorate him with flowers. After they would leave, a Batara Ghani would then enter the room, stand near the door Jaya Vijaya and sing Gita Govinda songs, and perhaps perform a ritualistic dance. After a while, she would come out and announce that the Lord has gone to sleep and then the guard would close the main gate. Karnataka. Topic. Life after dedication A Devadasi's life after dedication was obviously very different centuries ago. Nowadays after dedication of a girl to the temple, she has to take bath every day early in the morning and should present herself at the temple during morning worship of Yelama. She is not allowed to enter the sanctum sanctorum. But she will bow to the deity from outside. Thereafter she sweeps compound of the temple. Every Tuesday and Friday she goes for yoga along with senior jagatis yoga teachers. During this period she learns innumerable songs in praise of Yelama and her son Parashurama. If she shows some aptitude to learn playing instruments she will be given training by her elder jagatis. In Yelampura and other villages devadasis do not dance but this is performed by eunuch companions. The main functions of devadasis would be singing and playing stringed musical instruments and jagat. They form a small group and go for yoga, from house to house on every Tuesday and Friday Jogan Shankar, 1990. <laughs> Social status Traditionally, no stigma was attached to the Devadasi or to her children, and other members of their caste received them on terms of equality. The children of a Devadasi were considered legitimate and Devadasis themselves were outwardly indistinguishable from married women of their own community. Furthermore, a Devadasi was believed to be immune from widowhood and was called a Khanda Sabhagyavati, woman never separated from good fortune. Since she was wedded to a divine deity, she was supposed to be one of the especially welcome guests at weddings and was regarded as a bearer of good fortune. At weddings, people would receive a string of the telai wedding lock prepared by her, threaded with a few beads from her own necklace. The presence of a devadasi on any religious occasion in the house of an upper caste member was regarded as sacred and she was treated with due respect and was presented with gifts. <laughs> <laughs> Contemporary statistical data India's National Commission for Women, which is mandated to protect and promote the welfare of women, has collected information on the prevalence of devadasis in various states. The government of Odisha has stated that the devadasi system is not prevalent in the state. There is only one devadasi in Odisha, in a Puri temple. 
In March, a newspaper report said that the last Devadasi, Sashimoni, attached to Jagannath Temple had died, bringing the curtain down on the institution. Similarly, the government of Tamil Nadu wrote that this system has been eradicated and there are now no Devadasis in the state. Andhra Pradesh has identified 16,624 Devadasis within its state and Karnataka has identified 22,941. The government of Maharashtra did not provide the information as sought by the commission. However, the state government provided statistical data regarding the survey conducted by them to sanction a Devadasi maintenance allowance. A total of 8,793 applications were received and after conducting a survey 6,314 were rejected and 2,479 Devadasis were declared eligible for the allowance. At the time of sending the information, 1,432 Devadasis were receiving this allowance. According to a study by the Joint Women's Program of the Bangalore for National Commission for Women, girls who have to accept becoming a Devadasi, few reasons were provided, which included dumbness, deafness, poverty, and others. The life expectancy of Devadasi girls is low compared to the average of the country, it is rare to find Devadasis older than 50. Topic in popular culture The last great Devadasi, Bharatanatyam dancer Balasaraswati's story, as told by her son-in-law, appeared in the book Balasaraswati, Her Art and Life, a dance performance of Balasaraswati was documented by Satyajit Ray in the 1976 film Bala. The film was jointly produced by National Centre for the Performing Arts and Government of Tamil Nadu. The 33-minute documentary features the life and some of the works by Balasaraswati in the form of narration and dance. In 1984, T. S. Ranga made a Hindi film, Giddh, based on the theme of exploitation of young girls in the name of the Devadasi tradition with the film's story set in a village on the border of Maharashtra and Karnataka. It starred Smita Patil and Om Puri in the lead roles. In 1987, another Hindi movie, Mahananda, produced and directed by Mohan Kavya, portrays life of a Devadasi in a coastal village in Maharashtra. In 1999, a Tamil serial by the name of Krishnadasa was aired in Sun TV. It had Gemini Gainasan, a popular movie actor, in a prominent role. In 2002-2003, a Tamil serial titled Rudra Vinai showcased the Devadasi system in 1702-1703-2003 in Tanjore, Tanjavur district of Tamil Nadu, in a short descriptive way. An important role was held by a Devadasi character in the series. In 2011, the director Biban Kidran made a documentary about Devadasis called Sex, Death and the Gods as part of BBC Storyville series in 2011. In 2012, Vice Guide to Travel produced a controversial documentary Prostitutes of God, which has been criticized for its portrayal of Devadasi sex workers. In 2016, a show named Krishnadasa started airing on Colors TV, which is based on the lives of Devdasis married to Lord Krishna. Agnihal Bengali, Agnihala was a Bengali period romantic drama where a king falls in love with a Devdasi that premiered on November 21, 2016 and aired on Star Jalsa. This serial also portrays the life of Devdasis. See also Sacred prostitution Child prostitution Nagarvadu Duki Shamaki dancers Gomantic Maratha Samaj Tawaif Notch Chakyar S and Nangyarama S of Kerala Kanjiratu Yakshi